It was 46 years ago, the first year of our marriage, and I'd gotten up early and uh, went and took my seat that I usually have in the morning, and I was going to pray a little bit and talk to the Lord and read some scripture before class. And so I'm sitting there having my coffee, and that's going on, and all of a sudden, the Lord just, just triggered my imagination, and I saw a flower. And, I mean, you've had that to happen before. The Lord just sort of brings something to your mind. He just triggers your imagination. And, and I saw this flower real clearly. And then I watched as the flower started wilting. Now, sometimes it takes a while, but this time it didn't. It was immediately, there was just, it was just like a download. I knew what the flower was, and I knew why it was wilting. And the flower was my wife, Dean, and she was wilting. And instinctively, I knew it was because it was something that I needed to up my game and bring more to the table. It was something that fell under the heading of my responsibility as the, the head of that home. It was just, I just knew. Now, I want you to watch this. I want you to see the imagery that I saw that day as clear as I can. I want you to look, look at this rose. Now, I, I, and now I want you to watch it come to life. That's what I immediately saw. And then as I watched it, I saw it start to wilt. It was a few years ago that uh, I was reading, and the King James is talking about a leader. And uh, this is about leadership. This is, today is about men. It's about husbands. It's about your role in the care God's given you over your home. And so I, uh, I was reading out of the King James Version and First Timothy, which is talking to leaders. He says this, he says, now a leader must be one who rules his house well and having his children in subjection in all gravity. For if a man doesn't know how to rule his house, then how is he going to take care of the church of God? Now, in more of a modern language, here's how that sounds. It says, he must handle his own affairs. That makes sense. He must attend to his children and have their respect. Makes sense. For if someone is unable to handle their own affairs, then how can they take care of the church of God? So that's a modern translation. But what caught me at that time was having the children in all gravity. And I began to, I began to put a model together in my head that they're going to put on screen. And it had to do with, with a man who was... A leader. He was an overseer. And an overseer simply means to see over. And so in his role, he was seeing over his home. He had his wife who had enough space from him and independence under his care so she could be, be uh, blossom and grow and become the rose that God had for her. She could live in the safe zone, feeling taken care of, close enough to be warmed by his love and cared for and understood, and, but far enough away until she could, she could individuate and become the person God had called her. Somebody who, who has the emotional intelligence to, to figure that out with the wife and the children can take that same thing and bring it to the church and now lead from the church where can people will not be too much under the thumb and control, but be close enough they're cared for. Makes sense to you. And so, so if, if the man is looking, which is what I was doing that morning, was looking over, like you're looking over what God's put under your care, and now you see it. Now, what I want to talk to you men about is I want to talk to you about five things about men that I think is a part of this responsibility. But I know us men, and I know the moment this starts, some of you will check out. I know some of you will have a tendency to shut down. Some of you will have the tendency just to lock up as men. And what I'm going to do right now is pray that that doesn't happen. I'm also going to pray that God gives us hearing ears 
and help us really understand what God says about a role and why he gave it to us. I mean, it's an assigned role. I mean, God thought this up himself and said, men, I want you to step into this role. And whatever God has given you to step into, you can do it with his help. So just keep your eyes open. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every man who's sitting here and is on line. Every husband. And I pray you'd give us open ears to hear. I pray you would have a a real gracious anointing with the get it factor around your word today. And we believe you're going to help us as, as men and as husbands. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, the first thing is taken from Ephesians 5.25, and it is love your wives. Now, most people don't know that in Bible times, and why would you have to command a husband to love your wives? You know, you know not one time in the Bible does it say, wives, love your husbands? Now, obviously, I hope that happens. But why would you have to tell a man to love his wife? Because we need it that plain. <laughs> Husbands, do this. Look at me. Look at my lips. Love your wife. Now, in Bible times, in the culture, particularly the Roman and Greek culture, that was not the case. So we're in a time where, I mean, Christianity raised the value of women hugely. You, 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 and so he had to be playing. You love your wives. It was a radical day. Husbands are to value the wife above everything else in life. Husbands, your wife needs to feel like she is number one, other than Christ. And we understand as I go through all this stuff, there's needs that obviously you can't meet that God has to meet. We understand that. But we're talking about the ones that God's given you the role to meet. Number one, the God-ordained position for a man to step into is to live life and do life in a way until the end of the day, she feels like she's number one. God created and made her that way with that need and for the man to be able to step into his role and for her to feel that special. Matter of fact, as a church, we started the church here, and it was in the early days and growing, and we got busier and busier and busier. Uh, that was one of the words, that was one of the questions the Lord put on my heart, just to keep a rein on how I was doing with my family. And I would go home, and I would ask Dean. I would say, <clears throat> tell me a question. Do you feel like you're number one in my life? I mean, I, I want you to know it, but I want to go beyond the knowing it, because you can kind of trick it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know you are. No, no. Do you feel, do you know I'm, that you're number one? And I actually would do that with my children too. When things get busy, I, I need for you to know that. As a matter of fact, if you, if you want to see, husband, if you want to see your wife wilt quickly, let her begin to pick up that someone or something is more important than she is. When she starts having that sense that there's something else that's taking her rightful spot, I can promise you that's the moment that life flow begins to drain off of her because that's not the way it was meant to be. Number two, you love her. All of this is about loving. You love her by having a partnership with her. For this reason, the man shall leave, in Ephesians 5, 31, shall leave his father and mother and say the word with me, and be joined to his wife and the two shall become what? One. Wives do not want to do life by themselves. Wives do not want to be ships passing in the sea. There's a need that God put in a wife for a wife to do life with someone and be joined to them. That joining is huge because it is spirit, soul, and body. The Bible says that if you sleep with a prostitute, you become one with her. There's a oneness physically that happens through that that union. But there's also a oneness that happens spiritually. There's a oneness that happens emotionally. There's a joining that happens together that a woman, a wife, desperately needs to be joined. Now, if, if if that division is there and you're doing life on a separate page and you're just having a place you come together, that's not, that's not one. Doing life together 
I think scripture wise, a husband is a part of life. The wife is a part of life. Raising the kids, making decisions, sharing life together, doing life, not as two separate. Well, there obviously are going to be some separate, but it's, it's a togetherness. She does not want to do life alone. Question, ask her. Do you feel a part of my life? And we, are we sharing enough about stuff that you're not obviously there, but am I bringing you there? Sharing life together. Number three is love her by protecting her. By protecting her. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them. This is your wife. With understanding. Somebody, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's where I get like, I'll never understand her. Uh, the Bible says there is a level of understanding that God will give you grace to have. And give her honor as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together, you're, you're heirs together with this thing for the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. It's interesting. What, what, Mike, what does it mean when the prayers are not hindered? I mean, th- there's a way that you do life with your wife that apparently has to do with God answering your prayers. I mean, it's almost like God has said, I'm not going to let you do one thing at home and go over here and be something else over here. No, 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 no. Your first order, but who's number one in your life for the guys, husbands? The wife, yes? So now that becomes a really an important thing for the rest of your life, that you get that order straight and take care of business there. Now, I don't, I don't this is kind of how it translates for me. Well, we live in the Parsons over here beside the church for 16 years. And I had times... And uh, two, I can remember that I would come to church to talk to you like I'm doing today. But get here, and the Lord said, you can't, you can't do that. you got to go home and straighten up the mess Dean has made. <laughs> you got to go home and apologize and get that right. Otherwise, I am not going to bless you when you step into this pastoral role and violate that husband role. You don't get the blessing. As a matter of fact, you know, I don't know if you'd hear my prayer. That's why I said it was hindered. But that alignment, getting that straight. Now, I know, I know some of you, by the way, since we're talking about getting in line and getting this thing straight, we're voting this week, yes? yes. All right, if you haven't voted, many of you have, but if you haven't, vote. And vote, open the Bible, look at what it says concerning life and and what about babies and the whole thing. Look at it and then make your choice. But make it, first of all, you're a Christian. Second of all, you belong to a party. So vote. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, the second thing is a lot of people, when you read this scripture, they say, uh, the woman, the weaker vessel. Wait a minute. Have you not got in on all the stuff happening to women these days? Well, let's see what the Bible actually says. The word that's used there is the word that basically is a difference in a male, which is a mug. (laughs) Mug. You get it? No. You strong? Oh, yeah. Maybe physically stronger than the woman? Oh, yeah. That's generally true. So generally, that could be a great interpretation of the scripture. Watch out for the ladies. They're not quite as strong as you are. But that's not always true, because I know some of you guys, you don't need to fight your wife, you lose. <laughs> but the difference is this. Weaker in the sense of What is that? Exactly right. Every woman in the house knows. That's crystal. This is finer. This is more delicate. This is nicer. That's a woman right there. That's a wife. (laughs) This is us, man. And what the Word of God is trying to do is help us. 
in that he made us so we can lead. He made us so we can be strong. He made us who we are to have the position we have. But also he's put under our care someone who is totally different than we are. And that's why it says you dwell with them with understanding. You got If you don't understand, you'll break it. If you don't understand, you won't know what you have. If you don't understand. So he says, come on. He says, uh, husbands, protect her. Don't d- protect, don't, don't let, you, you're the defender of the family. She, she was built and wired. By the way, you do know that God made Adam out of dirt, right? And that's why he's dirty. And he made Eve out of the rib. That's why she's cleaner. But you know, the, you know the word. I mean, he made Adam from the dirt, but you know, he took the word, the, the uh, rib out or the side out of Adam. The word that's used there when about made her is the word built. He built her. So I'm just saying. It's a good time to tell you why she's built. Until sometimes she'd appreciate it. Because it's a Bible word. So not just, not just, how, how many of you men got out of bed and checked things out in the middle of the night sometime? How, how many of you sent your wife? Oh, mercy. Not, but not just at night. See, the wife needs you to spiritually lead this thing, to guard it, to protect it, this home, this overseer position. She, she needs you to stand at the helm and in the position God gave you. She needs to feel the sense of protection. Even what's happening in this society today, the, 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 that head of the home thing is what protects a lot of the craziness from getting too crazy. I mean, it's the strength that he brings to the table. They want you to understand them and the weaker vessel and the fact that they're wired differently and the masculine is it, but the feminine is something else, but it's under your care. To honor the feminine, to honor how she processes things. You, you protect her from, from having to move in ways that, that cause her to be insecure or causes her not to feel safe. Safety and security under this protection is huge. Did you know that a woman never can blossom if she feels unsafe, if she doesn't feel cared for, if she doesn't feel protected? She never can get healthy. God wired it that way, friends. We didn't. And so as I began to understand this and began to, around Dean with this with her, and began to understand some of these principles, it made a huge difference. It just turned the voltage up. Men, we, husbands, we need to get comfortable with Joshua's term, which says, listen, this is it. Step in your role. For me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. You just need to know that. You need to know that. We're, we're, we're going to do what's right. We're going to go to church. You know, we're going to protect you from chaos as much as I can. And, and also this environment of protection needs to be from criticism. How many, of you ever get, how many of you ever get a lot of criticism sometime outside? You know, you get a lot of, a lot of put-downs. The home, the relationship with the marriage, doesn't need to be a place where there's a high level of criticism. She needs to feel safe coming into an environment that's not critical, that's honoring of who she is. She needs to have trust and confidence that you're going to hang in there, your commitment is, until, the, until you die. This protection is that you don't have to worry about whether I'm going to hear the dang going tomorrow. You can get out, that's one thing you can get out of, your, out of your head. I want you to know, sweetheart, I'm in this thing, and I'm in it for good. And we go in the distance. You don't ever have to worry about me bailing out. I'm your protector, and I'm care for you, and I'm committed to you. Number four. Is you love by appreciating and valuing her. I mean, <clears throat> Proverbs 31 says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is, say it again, her worth is far above what? Silver, gold, rubies. If you have a wife, that's the value, and that's the value we need to place on her. They need to feel appreciated and valued for who they are. Not just what they do, what they do as well, but who they are. The thing that they need to see in your eyes, looking at them, the value 
that God has put on them. And watch this, that God now has given you to reflect back to them. God has given them, the wives, a husband who when she looks in their eyes, how God thinks about them can be reflected and their value can be reflected back to them through your eyes. <clears throat> Love her by showing her attention. And really I can put these together with that last point. Appreciating, valuing, and show her attention. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, the average... Average couple in a week's time spend, I think it's 27 minutes talking. One stat I read. Be it whatever it is, this, this art here of paying attention. How, how many of you know you can be together and not together? How many of you know that men can go someplace. How many know men can get home but never arrive? How many of you know you can go straight from work to the TV? How many of you know you can go straight from work to the phone and never connect? This, this art of showing attention is waking up. And actually, probably one of the best ways to do this is Communication. You show, you show her, you love her, and I know this is deep, by talking to her. That threw you, didn't it? Opening your mouth and talking. How about, how about, how about words of affirmation? I want you to watch this with me. I want you, they're going to put this flower blossoming back up there. And I, want you to, I want you to watch this when this happens. You're my favorite person in the world. When I'm ha- you know, I'm the happiest is when I'm with you. Did, you. did you know, sweetheart, that I adore you? I adore you. Do, you. do you know every day I think I must love you more? You know, I can't figure out God's graciousness when he gave you to me. I can just say this to you. It was just, it was a, you're just a gift of God. You know, you, me, we're awesome. Put me and you and God in the same box, and we just, we're just, that's a great adventure. Now, let me ask you this question. You remember when I mentioned, mentioned that it needed to be free, some free of constant criticism? It needed to be a, how long does it take for that rose to stop blossoming with, with its words of affirmation and start turning around when you have words that hurt and tear down? See how it works? That's just just the way it works, friends. Now, under the same tag, probably we need to do the exact opposite. Words need to come. Life and death are in the power, say it with me, of the, is she alive? If it is, part of the reason she is, that God gave you the role, is that that what God thinks and says about her is coming through the person God put over her. God's using you to meet a need in her, and it's coming out of your mouth, and you say it. Faith without works is what? Dead. Thinking about the expressions and never saying them is not the same as actually saying them. They're dead. There's no action. You've got to say it. And you've got to say it to them. And they need to hear it. But the opposite of that is probably receiving, and that is listening. A woman needs, a wife needs, every woman does, but a wife needs to be listened to. Look at Proverbs 18, 13 says, He who answered before listening, that is his folly and shame. Listen. You, you remember, somebody go back with me when you remember when you were in love. You remember anybody here been in love and talk, 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 talk. Remember those days? Talk, 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 talk. You didn't have to say talk to me. You didn't have to say sweetheart talk. You just talk, talk, talk. Anybody other than Dean and I have talked all night long until the sun came up the next morning? All night long. We, we were just, it was just, that's what happens. That's what love does. Now, what I'm convinced of is a lot of people, because they haven't nurtured this and they haven't, they haven't had this blooming to happen, they just kind of wilt separate from each other and live that way until this atmosphere in them 
they're not in love anymore. Oh, they would say they love each other. But when they sit together, there's not much communication or talk happening. Now, I promise I won't do it to you if I see any of you. But I'm going to share a secret with you, okay? When I'm in a restaurant, I always watch couples. And I can't tell you how many couples I've watched eat a whole meal and never say anything. I'm expecting any moment to see them come out and start doing hand language, hand language but they can't talk. If that's the case, friends, there's hope. But there's not hope without you leaning into some of this and with God's help. It really is. Listen to her words. Listen. Let her in your world. Listen to her feelings. An old counseling skill, and I think it'd be great if you could use this. She, if, if she is talking and you tell her back what you hear her saying and what you hear her feeling, it gives validation to the fact that you are actually listening. And sometimes it will actually help her clarify because she'll be talking and she won't know how she's feeling. But when you say back to her, well, you're talking like you're really frustrated. And she said, oh, you, you know, I hadn't even thought, but you're right, I am. I just exactly what I am. And now, now there's a completed cycle of her talking and you listening and you giving some feedback. This awfully, awfully affirming and strengthened relationship. Let me, let me describe it this way. If you picture a man, and ladies, I think you'll understand this. If you picture a man, his, his, his life is like a, a, a seven-room house. And the rooms are the different parts of his life that he goes into throughout a day. For instance, you would have a room where there's a job, a room where there's golf, a room where there's a new sports car or a sports car or, or a hobby or a garden. There's a role for his children, a room for his children, there's a room for church. And yes, there's a room for his wife. But he only, she only gets him one part of that entire day. Now, I'm not suggesting you go to work together and do all this stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying an invitation, sir, from you to let her be joined to you so that she has a chance to go into those rooms with you, even if it's just been conversation. And in those rooms, you share with her, and she has a chance to see from your point of view and then have a chance for you to see from her point of view. That, that inclusion, that sense of your inviting her in, it's a leader's way, it's an invitation to lead and to invite her in so that now she feels joined she doesn't feel like there's only one segment of your life because you blocked everything else out because you want to do a good job when you're in this place. But it only leaves one slot for her in a very short part of time of the day. But that takes time. It takes time. And it's a lot easier than I've just said. And it's easier because sometimes for us men, we don't quite know what's wrong or how to fix it. Take a look at this drama. You, but I'm hungry. What do you want to do for lunch? How about leftovers? You know, I was thinking we could have something delivered. Okay. Great. What were you thinking? I don't know. You pick. I'm kind of in the mood for a big, fat, juicy burger. Mm, I'm not feeling that. Hmm. How about Mexican? No, I don't think so. All right. Well, what are you craving? I don't know. You decide. Katie, what? I just gave you two options and you shot them both down. <laughs> okay, okay. How about pizza? Now you're speaking my language. Now that is why I love you. Go order the pizza.
Yeah, hi. I'd like to order a delivery. Yeah, that's me. Yes, that's our address. Great. Yeah, I'd like a large pepperoni. And mushroom. Oh, sorry. Make that a large pepperoni and mushroom. All right, great. Thank you. It said 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Would you, um, what did you think of the service this morning? Yeah, I thought it was good. What did you think? It was good. Hey, you know, I would, <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say, I really think a lot of people could benefit from that message. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know who I wished had heard it? Hmm. Brian. You know, he and his wife are having a real hard time right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, maybe you could uh, send them the link. They can watch it online. That's a great idea. Oh, game's on. Oh, yeah. Come on, boys. Hey, where are you going? You don't want to watch the game? No, I think I'm going to go lay down. Don't you want to check your fantasy points? No. All right. Well, I'll let you know when the pizza gets here. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's a good hit. Come on. Hey, Doug. Yeah. Can we just talk for a down? second? Sure. Can you turn that off? Okay. <laughs> so, you know how Pastor Mike was talking about the whole flower thing? Oh, yes, my beautiful rose. <laughs> you know how... Um, you know how God showed him that his wife was actually, like, wilting? Yeah. Well... Wait. Are you saying that's how you feel? I thought I had two green thumbs. Just call me Mr. Miracle Man. <laughs> Very funny. I think you mean Miracle Grow, anyway. True. Miracle Grow. <laughs> I just, um... So, you're saying you feel like the wilting flower? I do. Yeah. Katie, I had no idea. I didn't either. I mean, I, something's just been off for a long time, and I think today I just realized it. Well, what do you think it is? Is it work? Or is it all the craziness in the world right now? No, Doug. It's, it's us. What do you mean, it's us? I thought we were good. We're not. Well, then tell me what's wrong. It's like we're in this house together physically, but we're not emotionally connected. I feel so distant from you. I feel like the life is just draining out of me. Katie, I'm sorry. I had no idea. I mean, I feel terrible. I don't want you to feel bad. I, well, I just... What do you want me to do? I don't know. Great. So you're the wilting flower, and apparently I'm doing something wrong. No, I didn't say that. What do you want from me? Doug. You know that I love you. I just, I don't know what to tell you. I am giving you everything I know how to give. I got to get some air. I'm going for a walk. But why is that accurate? Is that not men, husbands? You ever been there? I have. I have. And not know that somehow what God had put inside of me relationally that relational dynamic is what she needed. Not know how to give it, but you could clearly see there's, there's some things she needs. And obviously not all the time when a woman has issues going on is it the man's fault. I'm not suggesting that, but I'm suggesting in the relationship 
there's a place that she needs to go inside of you. And there's something she needs to touch. And there's a relationship that fuels her and causes her to come alive that God has put in your stewardship. <clears throat> you know, I, I was thinking about this. And uh, <clears throat> I think when God matches you up and gives you a bride, puts her under your care, I think he's given you what it takes in that relationship that she needs. But you got to fight for it. If you need help, you got the pastoral staff, if you need further help, you have counselors. You might have a good mentor or a good friend that you need to sit down and talk to. But you need to hang in there and you need to go after this thing. You need to figure it out what she needs and how God can help you minister to her. But you don't quit. You don't quit. We're in this thing for good. Hang in there. Pray. Seek God's help. As we wrap this up, I want you to listen to this song just as you contemplate a few of those things that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm.